Hi, welcome to RG Lecture. So this channel is dedicated to the students of physics and this particular playlist of AC circuit contains all the videos which are a part of syllabus of graduation level physics. It can be BSc physics, physics honors, electronics, electrical engineering and many such courses. So consider sharing these playlists and videos into your college and class groups. Also join my telegram group link is given in the description. Hi, so in this video we will discuss the concept of phasers in detail. I have made a separate video because in this unit of AC circuits uh, we have to deal with phasers only. So let's start. So before reading any stuff let me introduce it informally, it would be better. So when we used to study DC circuits, there was a voltage, there was a current. If current is 5 amperes, it will be 5 ampere. If voltage is 3 ampere, 3 volt, it will be 3 volt. It's fine. But when we study AC circuits, first of all, there is direction to both. There is a direction of current. There is a direction of voltage. Okay, so basically those directions are represented by these equations, right? E is equals to the E naught sine omega t. I is equals to the I naught sine omega t plus phi. Okay, so if we represent anything by these equations, that means there is a possibility of having a phase difference between them. Okay, so there will be a phase difference. So there is a direction, there is a direction, but being of wave nature, being of changing uh, constantly with time, they also have a phase difference. Now, if something has a direction, and we represent it by scalars then it becomes uh, no use to study vectors so basically we use vectors to represent those quantities and those vectors are all only called as phasors so what are phasors phasors are just vectors used to represent the ac voltage or ac current okay this was informal definition now let us start with the formal definition so the study of AC circuits become much simple, much simplified when we represent an AC current and AC EMF as rotating vectors with angle between them equal to phase difference between them. So suppose my phase difference between the voltage and current is say 30 degrees. Okay, so I will draw the current as this and I will draw the voltage vector as this and this will be 30 degree. This is called as phasor diagram. This is called as phasor diagrams. These rotating vectors are called as phasors. Now, why rotating vectors? Now, suppose at some time instant, this difference is increased to 60 degree. So basically, I will say that V is a rotating vector, right? V is a rotating vector. Now, this difference is 60 degree. Okay. So definition, a rotating vector that represents a qual quantity. Here it should be quantity. Quantity varying sinusoidally with time is called a phasor and the diagram is called as phasor diagram. Much simple. Okay, and there are few things, there are few rules to draw a phasor. Let us discuss. The length of the phasor is directly proportional to amplitude of the wave depicted. Okay, so suppose the amplitude of my uh, quantity is phi. So I have to draw this length as phi centimeter or phi meter or any unit, but the amplitude of this arrow represents the amplitude of our quantity. So this is the rule number one. In circuits which have combination LCR in series, it is customary to draw the phasor representing current horizontally and call this as a reference phasor. We will see this in the LCR circuit, but I will tell you in parallel voltages then, okay, the direction of rotation is considered anti-clockwise. Yes. So these, since these phasors are called as rotating vectors, so in which direction they will rotate? Some students will rotate in the anti-clockwise, some will rotate in the clockwise. No. There is a fixed direction in which you have to rotate the vectors and that direction is anti-clockwise direction only. So this is rule number four. In any one diagram, the same type of value is used for phasors and not the mixture of values. Okay. So this is a pure theory video. You will not understand phasors much from this video because phasors are in application. So then too, I am trying to explain. So for example, you are drawing the peak values you are drawing the peak value. So then you have to consider peak value of everything. For example, this is a peak value of voltage in resistive circuit. So then on this side, you have to draw the peak value of voltage in inductive circuit. 
on this side you have to draw the peak value of voltage in capacitor circuit okay so you have to consider the values similar values okay if you are considering the peak values then peak value should be there every side for example you change your mind now you want to consider the rms value so this is the rms value across resistor this is the rms value across inductor so this was only the rule number five that you have to consider the same type of values you have to consider the same type of values and the rule number two and rule number three will be covered in my videos on simple circuits they basically mean suppose there is a lcr circuit okay in lcr circuit everything is connected in series okay everything is connected in series okay this is the basic diagram so in series the current is same okay so same current will pass through all three of them suppose the current is i is equals to the i naught sine of omega t so current will be same so if i draw the phasor diagram of all three of these so current will be drawn in the x axis because it is same okay and i can draw the voltage on y axis accordingly okay so this was said in the point number three that draw the current on x axis in case of lcr series circuit and in parallel you know in parallel voltage is same suppose i have this term i have a capacitor i have a inductor okay so in parallel voltage is same so in lcr parallel i have to draw the voltage on this side and i can draw the current on this side so basically this was a bit of theory lecture again i am repeating you will not understand much in from this lecture because we ultimately have to make the diagrams okay so this is angle angle is the basically phase difference what is the angle angle is the phase difference length of phasor indicates the peak values which we draw generally and their projection on x axis give instantaneous value for example this will be x is equals to the some uh, phi sin omega t phi cos omega t okay if this is the my value and it will be x is equals to the phi sin omega t so these are called as instantaneous values okay so for example there is a phasor famous also you have heard that at your homes there is a three phase ac voltage okay so at your home there is a three phase ac voltage coming and you know how is the phasor diagram of this somewhat this is the phasor diagram of this we have three wires live neutral and ground okay and phase wire okay so there is a phase difference of 120 degree between all those three phasor diagram this is one famous question it might appear in any exam so this was all about this video see you in the next video in our playlist